Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss a topic from Unit 4 of Embedded and Real-Time System, Estimating Program Run Times. So first, let us know what is execution time. So execution time is the amount of time required to complete the execution of a job. So in general, we can say JI is the job and EI is the execution time of that job. So here you have to understand one thing. Actual execution time cannot be computed until the job completely executed. So we can uh, say that is we can determine the execution time within their range that is EI minus and EI plus. EI minus is the minimum execution time and EI plus is the maximum execution time. So from this we can estimate the program run times. So here you have to remember one thing that is actual execution time of the job is unknown until it is executed. So for the purpose of determining whether the each job can always complete by its deadline, here the maximum execution time of each job should be known. So this execution time depends on four things. One is source code, then compiler, then machine architecture, then its operating system. So source code, our um, program, then compiler, it will be converting the source code into the object code. Then machine architecture, so what type of memory, what is the cache we are using, what are the registers we are using, what, which type of architecture we are using. So depending upon that also it varies. Then the operating system, so task scheduling, how we are managing the memory, etc. So next we are going to say analysis of straight line source code. So this is an example. So here we are considering three line source code. That is line 1, A is equal to B into C. Line 2, B equal to D plus E. Line 3, D equal to A minus F. So in this example, we are going to uh, calculate the execution time for line 1 alone. So first for line 1, there are three variables A, B and C. So in order to execute this line 1, we need six steps. That is in the first step, first we have to get the address of C, then load the value of C. Next, get the address of B, load the value of B, then multiply B and C and store the result in A. So totally there are six steps to complete the execution of line 1. Now using this, we can calculate the execution time. So execution time of line 1 is summation i is equal to 1 to 6. So this denotes the steps. That is L1.1, L1.2, L1.3, L1.4, L1.5 and L1.6. Then T execution, that is execution time, L1.i. So by adding these 6 execution time, you will be getting the execution time of line 1. So there are two good reasons for the use of deterministic approach. That is why we go for this deterministic approach. The first thing is many hard real-time systems are safety critical. So here, uh, if we execute a job for first time, you will be getting one execution time. Then again, if you execute the same job for the second time, the execution time may vary. Like that, if you ex again, if you execute the same job, again, it gets varied. So this is the normal thing. But here, the variation in the job execution time is kept as small as possible. So this is one of the good reason why we go for deterministic approach. Then another reason is, uh, in um, if we use this deterministic approach, here the hard real-time portion of the system is often small. That is, if we consider a system, there uh, may be hard real-time, otherwise soft real-time. But the hard real-time portion will be actually small portion only. The rest of the portion will be soft real-time only. So for these reasons only, we go for the deterministic approach. So this is the schematic of timing estimation system. So first preprocessor, that is our code, then it is given to the parser. So here it is, uh, the code is analyzed. 
then procedure timer here the number of procedures are calculated and its uh, timing time duration is noted in a table then loop bounds loop bound is here again we are calculating number of loops number of iterations it carries everything is uh, done in the loop bounds then time schema so how much time it required to for execution then code prediction architecture analyzer so preprocessor produces compiled assembly language code then parser it will analyze the uh, source code then procedure timer it maintains a table of procedure and their execution times then loop bound so loop bound module obtains a bound on the number of iterations for the various loops in the system then time schema is independent of the system it depends only on the language then code prediction module so by using this the code generated by the preprocessor can be predicted and using architecture analyzer which architecture we have used depending upon that also execution time can be estimated i hope you all who have understood what is estimation of program run times if you like this video kindly subscribe my channel and share with your friends thank you